I'm not sure I believe that wholeheartedly, but I do think there is something to kind of outgrowing. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having an awesome day. It is Thursday, December 7th here in South Georgia. And on today's video, we're gonna take a closer look at some of these beautiful brassicas I've got growing here behind me. Talk about how we got to this point. Do we need to do anything else to these plants or just let them roll? And then we're gonna get another round started in the greenhouse. So we'll start off on this side and kind of work our way through all four rows, talk about some of the varieties we have planted. First, we've got some really awesome looking Brussels sprout plants right here. We've got one runt there, which you're gonna get if you plant enough plants. Not sure what's going on with that one, but the rest of them are looking great. So most of these plants are about two and a half foot tall, just as green as they can be, loaded down with leaves. And if we take a closer look, we can see some sprouts forming towards the bottom of that stalk there. Some tiny little ones starting to form on up that stalk a little bit. Now last year we did an experiment with pruning some of those bottom leaves to see if that gave us some taller stalks and more consistent sprout production. And what we found, at least down here, is that that's just more work. Wasn't really necessary. We got just as good, if not better, production on the plants that we just let roll and didn't do anything to. Now I have seen, and I'm sure you have too, people plucking off those bottom leaves and growing these nice, tall, beautiful stalks of Brussels sprouts. That's why I said earlier, at least for me down here, it didn't seem to matter. It may matter where you live. I saw a short video the other day of Charles Dowding growing some Brussels sprouts over at his place across the pond. He had this really tall stalk. I wanna say it was four foot tall or taller. And he was just plucking these beautiful little Brussels sprouts off that stalk and it just kept making more and more at the top there. Important to note, he has perfect weather for growing Brussels sprouts over there. Our winter weather is perfect for growing them, but our spring and early summer weather isn't that great for them. So that's why things may be a lot different down here than where he is. Don't think just because you see him growing Brussels sprouts like that, that they're gonna perform the same in your area. I doubt we can ever get a stalk that tall, but if we can get a nice, you know, three foot tall stalk that's filled out mostly, hey, I'll take that. And then at the beginning of this Brussels sprout row and into the next row, we've got cabbage. Now, I didn't do a great job of keeping up with where I put certain varieties. I know what that red cabbage variety is, but I've got two different green cabbage varieties. I think this right here is our Megaton cabbage and then backing up a little bit on the other side of some of that red cabbage. I think that right there is our Bravo cabbage. So taking a closer look at what I think is this megaton cabbage here, you can see we're starting to get some head formation there, but good ways off from having a nice big, dense, compact head of cabbage ready to harvest. The leaves on this stuff are absolutely massive. Let's see if I can show you without breaking this one. Here's my hand. You can see just how big that cabbage leaf is there. And as I've told you before, if you wanna grow a big head of cabbage, Got to grow a big cabbage plant with leaves like this. I think we're well on our way to some pretty good size heads of cabbage. So our green cabbage has started to tighten up a little bit, but our red cabbage hasn't. This is my first time growing this Buscaro red cabbage variety, and I'm pretty happy with it so far. A lot of times red cabbage doesn't get quite as big as the green cabbage, but just looking at the size of some of these leaves, I think we're gonna have some pretty nice heads of red cabbage too. Now, assuming the weather cooperates, assuming it stays like it has been the last couple weeks and we don't get any crazy, crazy cold weather, this cabbage should hold pretty well in the soil here, which means we don't have to harvest it all at one time. We can come in here when we need some cabbage, grab a head or two. We wanna share some cabbage when somebody else needs some cabbage. We can grab a head or two. We don't have to worry about harvesting all at one time. We can just kind of slowly work our way through the row. And then in our third row, we've got cauliflower. Now I've got two different varieties planted here, one white, one purple, but I don't really know which is which. I can tell where one variety stops and another one begins. We can see those plants there 
a little more green and bigger than these plants here so this is one variety and then the other variety takes up about two-thirds of the row now this smaller variety of which I only have about seven or eight plants is just starting to wrap a little bit there I can't see any heads forming if I unravel those leaves but it shouldn't be long before we're able to tell if this is white or purple but as I look closer at some of these plants on this taller variety, we might can dig around here and see if we can find out what this actually is. That one there is starting to wrap a little bit there. Peel it back. Okay. It looks purple to me. So I guess these taller plants are the purple variety. And then these plants here are our white cauliflower, the amazing variety. Going to have a lot more purple than we got white, but that's okay. And then lastly, we've got our broccoli in this fourth row, which I wish was a little bit bigger, but I think we'll still do all right. I'm just seeing some kind of inconsistencies along this row here. Some of the plants look really big, some of them not so big. Not sure what's going on here. Not sure if I've got more fertility on that part of the plot than I do in this row right here. We're still going to end up having a pretty decent broccoli harvest, I think saw some heads forming earlier there we go right there trying to get a little bit but a long ways to go before we got something we need to cut now with the exception of a few of those broccoli plants we got a pretty dang good looking brassica plot here one of the better looking brassica plots i've had over the last few years and we got to this point by not using a whole heck of a lot of fertilizer. We put down that coop grow at planting like we do with just about everything else. We side dressed them one time with a little blood meal, but that's it. And so the appearance of these brassicas here speaks volumes about that chicken tractor system over there. All these veggies in here really like what those girls were putting down in the summer months. And for some reason, we haven't had hardly any pest pressure on any of these plants. Now we do have a few little holes on some of these cabbage leaves, but not near enough damage to justify filling up a sprayer. So I can't really explain why we've had hardly any pest pressure on these plants. I have heard some gardeners claim that pests won't attack healthy plants in fertile soil. I'm not sure I believe that wholeheartedly, but I do think there is something to kind of outgrowing any pest pressure. I think if you've got good soil fertility, the plants can kind of outpace any pest damage. Probably what we've got going on here, it's not like a pest is gonna go up to that beautiful looking cabbage plant and decide it doesn't want any of that. Now, without doing a soil test, just looking at these plants, do we need to feed them anymore? Are we worried about them running out of juice or do we just need to let them roll? Well, at this point, it's probably not going to do us any good to feed the broccoli and cauliflower anymore. We're already getting heads starting to form on those. Those plants have gotten probably close to as big as they're going to get. So we've done all we can do there. We'll take what we can get. Since our cabbage is already making heads and looking this good, I don't think I'll feed it anymore. I think I'll take what I get there. Now these Brussels sprouts here are still going to be in the ground quite a while, at least another couple months. So I'm likely to side dress those one more time with some blood meal, even though they look great right now. And then one more tip before we go to the greenhouse and start some more seeds. This is something that can be helpful during the winter months, especially when you get a lot of rain. It's not something I find myself needing to do as much the last couple years when we used to use a lot of synthetic fertilizers. I found myself needing to do it a lot. So if you've got some of these brassicas that aren't taking off like they should, I would highly recommend just coming in here with a little hoe and lightly scratching around the base of the plant. You don't have to get very deep with it. You don't have to disturb a lot of those feeder roots. Just scratch around a little bit and lightly aerate that soil. What can happen, especially after a hard rain, kind of compacts that soil and it's almost like this plant can't breathe. So if you come scratch around in here a little bit, you'll notice that those plants will pop usually a day or two afterwards. So I did this yesterday, although these plants really didn't need a pop. Came in here, weeded around these plants here, kind of aerate that soil, break up that hard crust that had formed after all that rain we got this past weekend. Now, one of the things I usually don't do very well is plan ahead so we can succession plant some of these brassicas and have more of a continual supply throughout the winter. So that broccoli, cauliflower, and even the cabbage 
probably going to be done in December, maybe into January a little bit, and that's it. Most of that's a one-time harvest. We will get a little bit of side shoot production on that broccoli, but that main head is the main harvest on that. So if we want more of this stuff, we need to get some going now. I probably should have did this a couple weeks ago, actually, but better late than never. We're going to get some more going today. So with all these baby fig trees in here, I've got just enough room for one tray of cool season veggies. Got this ready earlier today, put some pro mix in here, got it pre-moistened, made some dibbles, still got plenty of seeds left over from our fall seed starting endeavors. So we're gonna do some cabbage in here, some broccoli, some cauliflower, and even some more lettuce. So we got our seeds down there. Now we just need to add some of this good old Go Dogs Perlite. Just lightly cover those seeds. This works a lot better than that old cheating roll tide perlite. Your seeds germinate a lot better and you grow out a better transplant when using this kind. And with the sides rolled down in the greenhouse, it's probably still plenty warm enough in here to get these seeds to germinate. Looks like we're sitting at a cozy 70 degrees in here right now. So those should get up and going pretty quick without any additional heat necessary. Now on nights where it gets below 45, I do turn on my little electric heater back there to keep the fig trees nice and cozy. So I'm sure those seeds will benefit from that as well. And hopefully if everything goes as planned, we'll have all these transplants ready to grow in the ground by the end of January and then have all this stuff ready to harvest, say end of March, early April, before we're ready to start planting a bunch of warm season stuff. So I hope you enjoyed the video today, and if you've got brassicas in the ground right now, let me know in the comments below how they're doing. And if you want to learn more about our feeding plan for those brassicas, you can see that on this video. We'll break down what we do for the broccoli, the cauliflower, the cabbage, and the Brussels sprouts. So check that out, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.